Hi everyone, in this video we are going to talk about priority queues in Java. So if we want to use priority queue, we have to declare the class variable or object priority queue. This is the generic class in Java and let's begin with the simplest priority queue and we'll be inserting integers into it. So we say pq is equal to new priority queue and this is how priority queue is created. Now main operations on priority queue that we do is we have to insert element and function for insertion is pq.add and the signature for the function is it takes a variable of the type that we use for priority queue. So since this is integer priority queue so let's insert an integer here. Let's insert few more add let's say 46 and then let's add pq.add12. So after insertion, two other key operations that we perform is, one is we look at the top element and by default when it creates a priority queue, this creates a min pq. That means um, elements will be coming in the uh, sorted order. Minimum element first will be the approach here. So for example, if we say, uh, let's print entire priority queue while pq dot uh, is empty. Is empty is another function in priority queue which tells priority queue is empty or not. If this is the case, what we do? We say system dot out dot println and we say pq dot remove and whatever we remove, we are going to print. So this will give us the elements in kind of increasing order. So first 12 should come out, then 34 will come out and then 46 will come out. So this is the default behavior. That's when we call it is a min pq, min priority queue. So let's go and compile our program. Java C, pq test dot Java, Java pq test, and we see they are coming in uh, sorted order. So kind of if we say pq dot add nine, then nine would have come first. Sorry, I have to compile it again, run it, and we see 9, 12, 30, 34, 46. So if in nutshell we have to summarize, what we have seen is java.util has this priority queue class, which has functions like add, which takes an element of type E, then there is a function remove, which returns element of type E, then there is a function we have used, boolean, is empty that tells priority is empty or not then there is one more function which is element difference between element and remove is this is like a peak function and this is called here poll function in fact there are peak and poll functions available in priority queue class but remove and element functions if we use then these functions do throw exceptions in case we try to do a remove or element operation on an empty priority queue. So these are the four key functions that we would remember and we would be using in most of the programming problems that we solve. <coughs> well, so this was an example of min priority queue. Now many a time some problems will require us to have a max priority queue where we want the elements to be obtained in the increasing order not essentially in the decreasing order. Sorry, uh, in the decreasing order are the elements required. So we need 46 first, then 34, then 12, then 9. If that is the priority queue required, that is called max priority queue. So let's see how do we create a max priority queue. So I'll comment that out and I'll put it again and we'll say this is max priority queue and we say max element first. Now the only difference between min priority queue and max priority queue is of calling the constructor. So here what we will do is we'll be calling another constructor which takes two parameters. First is the capacity. We can give any integer here and second one that we use is kind of a comparator, a comparison function. So for that one approach is we can say collections dot reverse order. So this function is a pre-built function which returns us a natural comparator and if we put this then what it is going to do is it is going to give us the reverse order comparator. So let's save it, try to compile it again and run it and this time we see our priority queue got reversed. 
Now this approach may work for our primitive data types like integer, character, or floating point values, but this approach may not work for our custom data types. If we define our own uh, class and let's say we want elements of our class to be kind of coming in a sorted order, so there this approach will not work. So this approach 2 also I'm commenting out. This was approach 1 for min priority queue. And there is a third approach for declaring any kind of priority queue by writing our own comparator. So this is for custom data types. So here what we do is we create a priority queue with right now we'll see integer example only and later on we'll talk about how do we do it for custom data types. So priority queue and here again what we do is we first give this value and second since we talked about is a comparator function. So what we can do is we can say new comparator and we can create an anonymous class over here. Here we are defining a comparator for integer. So this is the syntax and we will define the comparator here itself. Now comparator is an interface which kind of says you have to override one of the methods which is a compare method. So we will be overriding the method which is public int compare and it takes two variables of type wherever we are writing the comparator. This type of two variables will be needed let's say first and integer second. Now this is more or less like a string compare function where if we say if first element is less than second we should be returning the minus value. But if we do that if I say return f minus s then what essentially it will do is it will make a min priority queue for us. So this will be for min pq and in case we want max pq then we have to say return s minus f. This will make it a max pq. Now we will try both these examples. So first we are going with min pq. I save the program. Let's say compile it, run it and we see the min pq and if we go and comment it out and leave it Java C PQ and this time we see the max PQ. Now if this was our own data type rather than integer then only thing that would have changed in the scenario is we would have given rather than these integer data types over here we would have given our own data type and we could have created a compare function based on our own data type. So if you need to take a look at that kind of example, that will be covered in the next video. Thanks for watching.